Romans 3.23. Sure, I have heard some very godly men say that if they had to lose the entire Bible and could pick only one passage, this is the passage they would hold. Because in this passage is found the very salvation of man. First of all, he says, For all have sinned. All have sinned. Why don't we tremble? Why don't we know how terrible this is? We don't know how much we've sinned in the same way a fish doesn't know how wet it is. We were born in sin. We were conceived in sin. We were born in a fallen world of sin. The only thing we've ever known is sin. Our society, as Scripture says, drinks down iniquity like it was water. You see, here's something you need to understand. Hitler was not an anomaly. Hitler was what everyone in this room has the potential of being. And not only that, you need to understand, even in all the, all the wickedness of Hitler, Hitler was still restrained by the common grace of God. And you need to know this, that if it were not for the common grace of God restraining you in your unconverted state, you would make Hitler look like a choir boy. What we do not understand is what Scripture teaches about men. Men are evil. You say, well, I don't agree. That's because you've grabbed enough of Christianity to stand, but you don't believe the Bible. Do you have to teach a child to lie? Do you have to teach a child to be self-centered? Do you have to teach a child to be brutal to other children? They learn that on their own. Set them free. Discipline them not and see what you have in 10 years. A monster. Why? Because what Scripture says is true. And you hold your ears and you say, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. In the same way that a person dying of cancer is in denial and says to the doctor, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. But by cupping the hands over your ears, you close yourself off from any remedy. Why is sin so terrible? Because it's committed against God. Why don't we tremble? Because we don't know what that means. And why don't we know what that means? Because we do not know who God is. Such a glorious and blessed being. Imagine this for a moment. God stands there on the day of creation and He tells planets to put themselves in certain orbits in space and they all bow down and say Amen and obey Him. He tells stars to, to find their place in the sky and to follow His decree to the letter and they all bow down and obey Him. He tells mountains to be lifted up and valleys to be cast down and they bow down in worship. He tells the brave sea, you will come to this point and you will come no further and the sea adores. And God tells you to come and you go, no! How wicked is our sin. Do you see? Dear people, we're always getting a one-sided story. I'm going to talk about the love of God tonight in a way possibly you've never known it. But in order for you to appreciate the love of God, you've got to understand something. His love is exalted in the same way the stars are exalted by a pitch black sky. Let me ask you a question. Where did the stars go this afternoon? Did someone put them all in a basket and carry them away? How come when you looked up you didn't see them? Because there was so much light. You could not marvel at their beauty. You could not even see them. In the same way, you cannot see the stars of God's grace and His love with so much light. When preachers tell you that men are so good, the only way to truly appreciate the love of God and the grace of God is to see the pitch dark blackness of man. And when you see the pitch dark blackness of your own heart and then you realize that God moved in love for you it causes you to fall down on your knees with the greatest esteem and worship God